The other pillar of, of the sociocultural transformation is really around this new mode of communication. Facebook and Twitter defined this new mode of communication like a Facebook poke, a Facebook message, a tweet, that is fundamentally different than any type of communication that we've had before. And we've had communication evolutions in the past. It's similar you know, from when we went from in-person face-to-face meetings to phone calls and phone calls to email. Each time, the communication got more casual because um, it was easier to do. You could, you could call far more people than you could meet in person. You could email far more people than you could, you could pick up the phone and call. And again, that's expanding. The cost of staying in touch has gone down, so the number of people we're able and willing to stay in touch with goes up. The size of our networks are growing, and in particular, they're growing on the fringe. That's really important. Our weak ties are growing. It's not, and um, with, with Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter, the value is really on the weak ties. And business research shows that social capital is actually maximized on the fringe. It's with the weak ties that you're usually clo closing deals and, and hiring. You're not doing deals and selling to your mom or to your best friend or to your brother and sister. You're selling to your friend or friend networks. And that's precisely where these online social networking tools excel. And if you think about it, uh, over a lifetime, now, because the cost of staying in touch has gone down and it's become socially acceptable to become LinkedIn contacts with a greater number of people, we're able to capture the long tail of our relationships. Whereas, you know, in the past, if you met someone at a conference and you exchanged cards, if you didn't have something immediate to talk about, it would be difficult to stay in touch. One or the other of you would have to remember to reach out every six months, every 12 months, and remind each other of, of who you were. In the Facebook era, that changes. Because you now all of a sudden you have this CRM database. It's a visual database with the person's face and all this information about them. When they send you a message, you can click on that profile and be reminded of who they are. And so what we get is these options. We get the option that we have the option but not the obligation to exercise. Some of these options will never become valuable and we'll never want to exercise them. Some of them sometimes our life situation changes. We're out of a job. We need to hire someone new. We find ourselves in a sales position and someone is a prospective client, so on and so forth. These options then become valuable and we may want to reach out at that point and say, hey, you know, I met you at the social networking conference back in 2009. Would love to, to get in touch again. And so that's what we're seeing. And as part of my book too, I interviewed a lot of young people and in particular, my friend's son, Tommy, it gives everyone this, this broadcast channel I, it's not just about Marco and Catherine anymore. I'm just saying on my status that I like this book, or I'm just becoming a fan of this book's page. And anyone who cares about me and my preferences, they can discover information that way. And because the web over the last 16 years has really just been an explosion of content and information, we're all increasingly relying on our friends and people we trust, like the people that we follow on Twitter, to help us navigate through this massive amount of content and information and products out there. And so when we see that our friend has become a fan of this pants company, or we see that our friend Catherine likes this news article, we're more likely to read it than if we just saw it randomly as a link somewhere. And so it, instead of, it becomes, word of mouth becomes <coughs> passive. Before it was active, it was hard, it was high barrier, now it's automated and it's passive for me. And in this way, a lot of your existing customers, more than ever, can become your evangelists. They can become your free sales force. And the value that you should assign to someone changes. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. And the last thing is how many of you have used search.twitter.com? OK, I'm, I'm going to show it because I don't see enough hands.